Hey guys, welcome back. So a lot of people have been asking me what I've been up to since I haven't posted a video recently. That's because I've been working on a lot of different things. In fact, the only thing fun that I've had a chance to do is come out here and shoot in the afternoons. Uh, I've been testing some different ammo in my Glock 19 and also in my AR-15, which I don't have out here right now. Uh, but I got a new upper assembly for it. It's a 20 inch Delton upper. It's been doing pretty well for all factory stuff. Anyways guys, uh, let me show you what I've been working on, and I guess I got good news and bad news. <laughs> good news is, I'm posting a video. Bad news is, I really don't have anything to post a video on, so it's going to be a lot of random stuff. <laughs> Alright guys, stay tuned. Alright guys, this is the main thing that I've been working on. We got this new building out here. This is a Dirksen building. There's their logo. This particular one is a 12 by 16. Uh, we did have a storage unit in town, but we figured it's kind of a waste of money. If you're going to be paying every month just to store your stuff, you might as well pay money for something that you're going to own in the end, right? So we looked at these, and if you do the rent to own, the final price is kind of outrageous. So we all just chipped in together and bought it outright. This particular model uh, has two lofts. It has one there and one there. And as you see, I've just been filling it up with everything that we had in our storage unit. <laughs> been carting it all back from town and loading it up in here. So that's the main thing I've been working on. <laughs> okay, whenever I was moving everything around, I found something kind of cool. Turn my flashlight on here. I found this. It's my war chest. <laughs> yeah, it's a trunk full of things that I had with me on my deployment to Iraq. And this is pretty cool. I pulled some things out. They're sitting up here. Uh, yeah, let's get this into some light. And take a look at what we got here. Because I think I can still use some of these things. Alright, I think I got everything now. Some of this stuff, I don't even remember where it came from. Like this. I don't even know what this is. It doesn't look very big. Uh, it looks kind of like bug netting, but it's, uh, I don't think it would actually work for that. It's a little too coarse. So I saw it had a tag in here, so I opened it up just enough to get to the tag. And all it says is, Cover Individual Camouflage Desert, Class 2 Polyester, Lot Number 3. So I still don't know. <laughs> it's not very descriptive. Take a look at it. The old uh, chocolate chip camo pattern. This is almost like the old school deer blind material. Okay, well, it's, it's fairly large. There you go. Probably about five by seven. So, hey, cool. I guess I can use that for something. Alright, let's get started. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to go over everything in here because some of this just doesn't have a story behind it or anything. Like, uh, these manuals. USAF ability to survive and operate procedures in a nuclear, biological, and chemical environment. <laughs> not exactly fun reading. Uh, we've got some airman's manuals. There's some good information in here. Like, uh... Stuff about the M16, A2, M4, M9, gas mask inspections, first aid, UXOs, things like that. But not really for the purpose of our video here. And even some of the stuff like this flag, it's kind of interesting. Got this Iraqi flag. I don't remember where I got it. I mean, I know it was someplace in Iraq, <laughs> but. Since I don't remember the story behind it, it's not going to make for a very interesting video. <laughs> the only thing I remember about this is that I had it hanging up in my room for a long time. So, there you go. Little small things. Here's a souvenir. There's a little dagger. I used to have a sword that went with it. I don't know where that is. Santa Claus hat. I got a lot of mileage out of that <laughs> around uh, Christmas. Laundry bags. Paperwork. Here's my old uh, helmet cover. 
A lot of this is going to be uniform items. Right here. Here's my ditty bag here. Let's take a look in this. I got a bunch of pogs. Here's these. One thing a lot of people don't know is that if you go to any AFES facility in a deployed location, uh, they didn't give you change. I guess it's too heavy to ship over there or something. So they would give you these pogs and they have pictures on the back. Each one of them represents some denomination of change. So, looks like I I got a couple dollars worth of pogs here. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. An old alarm clock. It the, it's a Timex. It has the Indiglo function on it. Now I used this at some point after I got back because I just needed an alarm clock and then I put it back. So it's actually got the, the correct time on it here. Because those batteries aren't that old. <laughs> Believe me, if I'd still had the batteries in there for my rack, it wouldn't be running. It's been about 11 years. Well, this is pretty neat. I got a Hesco brand multi-tool. So if you've been deployed, you know what a Hesco wall is, or Hesco barriers that make up a Hesco wall. Um, and this is the actual Hesco brand multi-tool. Now the only way to get one of these is if you're actually setting up the HESCO barriers. Uh, in the boxes, probably about one out of every 60 boxes will have these uh, <laughs> uh, HESCO multi-tools. So that's pretty neat. It's a very uh, sought-after item there. There you go. It's not made very well, but it's just neat because it's HESCO brand and everybody remembers the HESCO barriers over there. There's a pipe and a pipe case. There we go. We thought we were going to be sophisticated and smoke pipes. <laughs> this one has a... Uh, looks like it's got a picture of a horse on it carved on there. I don't know if you can see that. Pipe tobacco is actually kind of tough to get over there, but you have this cool carry case for it. The pipe tobacco that you did find usually was all dried out. Yeah, I guess that's everything. This is just old knockoff Swiss Army knife. And this is... Just a random sheath here. Doesn't have anything in it. Eh, that's kind of neat. What else we got? Old letters. There's a random box with some camels on it. There's something gooey inside. Ugh. Okay. Apparently I had a Pez dispenser, and I guess the Pez melted. <laughs> That's disgusting. There you go. Got some, uh, got some money. There you go. Between that and the pogs, I don't know, maybe I can get some new Pez. Let's see what else we got. Got some uh, cigarettes because I smoked at the time. I don't know where those are made. They've been open. <laughs> Pretty sure those are no good. I don't smoke anymore. Here we go. Here's a new Cleopatra. Never heard of that brand around here. And then this, this is the brand that I smoke the most of. This is Royale Club Menthol. Trying to find, okay. They're made in France. There you go. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I couldn't go to the desert and not come back without one of these Aladdin-style lamps. <laughs> this one says Kuwait on it. It's made out of bronze, I think. I actually used this as an ashtray for a long time. <laughs> if you rub it three times, a genie will pop out and give you some reverse osmosis purified water. <laughs> Got more manuals, had a lot of those apparently. And it looks like everything else in here is going to be pretty much uniform items. So uh, let's get all this stuff cleared up and then we'll start looking at that. One last thing about these cigarettes here. I just remembered these were $12 per carton, which is like insanely cheap, right? 
But if you told them you only had eight dollars, they'd take eight dollars for the carton. <laughs> Don't smoke. I quit. You can too. <laughs> Alright. So, here's my old boots. These things are pretty heavy. Okay. I got some blousing straps in here. These don't look too hot. <laughs> these are pretty dry rotted. I don't think these are going to work. Uh, but I did find some newer ones over here in this, this old ID card holder. Now, yeah. these are actually still in pretty good shape. See, they're supposed to be elastic -y. Now, the way these work, if you've never seen how blousing straps work, um, you just put them around your leg here on the top of your boots, and then you would just roll your pant legs up under the blousing strap, like so. There you go. And you get a little bit neater and a little bit more comfortable appearance than actually just tucking your pant legs into your boots. So, if you've just never seen it done before. Is there anything else in here? Something. I got some aftermarket insoles in here. The size of these. These are size 9. Usually I wear a size 8. That might have just been the only size I had. <laughs> these look to be in fairly decent shape. Still got some salt stains on the side from where I sweat through the boots. Let's see if they still fit. If these do fit, I'm going to wear them. Alright, I got the boots on now. I can see right away these laces are just completely dry rotted. This one's already starting to split on me. But as far as the rest of the boot goes, it actually feels okay. I think if I clean these up, maybe get some new laces for them and some new insoles, I might still be able to wear these. They don't feel like they're too far gone yet. Yeah, they still feel pretty comfortable. They're kind of heavy because they're steel-toed. We needed steel-toed boots for our, our job. We were doing construction. Um, but yeah, they still feel all right. I think there's still some life left in these. <laughs> I mean, hey, you might as well wear them because if I just leave them in here, they're just going to continue to dry rot. Uh, might as well try to get a few more miles out of them anyway. I guess I'll talk about these too. Uh, otherwise, somebody's going to ask about them. Uh, these boots that I was wearing, I just picked these up from a surplus store like a week and a half ago. These are actually the same brand as these other boots. These are Bellevilles. And these are the Intermediate Cold Wet Boot. They're all leather construction. Uh, they do have a, a Gore-Tex liner. I if you can see the tag there. So they're supposed to be waterproof. Uh, I've been breaking them in. I got a really good deal on them. They weren't in the box or anything, but they were unissued. They still had the tags on them. They were just zip tied together. Uh, I've been really happy with them. They're breaking in good. Well, let's see what else we got. <laughs> now, here's my old hat. This thing is just dingy, man. I'm not even going to try to wear this. <laughs> you see, I got some writing in there on the inside of the, the brim. I actually wrote down all the different areas that we went to during the deployment. We got Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, Ramstein Air Base, Germany, Camp Beering, Ali Al Salim, Kuwait, Al Udeed, Qatar, and Camp Spiker, Iraq, OIF 06. And also, I don't know if you can read that, it's kind of tore up. It says, I heart man meat. <laughs> We used to prank each other all the time over there, and somebody wrote that on my hat, and it really ticked me off. I tried to wash it off, and, you know, it's like magic marker. That's not going to come off. So then I tried to, to sand it off. That was a bad idea. It started working a hole in the hat, so I just had to leave it there. This hat's in pretty rough shape. I bought another one on my way back. You can see this one's, like, brand new. I just needed something presentable to wear <laughs> around decent folk. We were issued... Two hats. We were issued the, the boonie cap and the eight point cap, and I did a, a complete video on, uh, on the eight point cap if you look back. Uh, 
But those are the two that we were issued. What else we got? DCUs. Half of these have Airman First Class rank on them. Half of them have Senior Airman rank on them because I promoted while I was in Iraq. It's got the U.S. Air Force and Civil Engineering skill skill badge on there, and the Centaf patch. There you go. Yeah, see this is one of the ones that has a senior airman stripes on it. The E4. I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna leave most of these in here, but I think I can still use these. It's kind of the wrong color to be using for deer hunting or anything, but I can use them for something. I'll just take the patches off and save the patches for posterity and wash these because they feel a little dingy and they, they smell like they smell like old surplus store <laughs> uh, but yeah I think I'll give these a good washing and I, I can probably use them for something there's another one there's the pants I don't know if these are gonna fit anymore I'll give it a try. So, four sets of uh, DCUs and here in the bottom. Got my Gore Tex. It's made by. Hey, this is actually made by Tennessee Apparel Corporation. <laughs> this is a sort of a Gen 1 DCU. Vortex here. Parka cold weather desert camouflage is what it says. You might be wondering why we had jackets in the desert. Well, because we were there in the winter time and it actually did get pretty cold. You know, it got into the, the 30s anyway. Got the rank insignia still on there. Yeah, this looks like it's in pretty good shape. I can definitely use these Gore-Texes, man. These are great. Might need to be washed, too. <laughs> and finally, we got the Gore-Tex pants, which I don't ever remember wearing these. So, yeah, they're basically brand new. And genuine Gore-Tex because you can see on here it has the Gore seam stamp on the inside. And these are trousers, extended cold weather camouflage. Made by Federal Prison Industries, Manchester, Kentucky. <laughs> so, I guess it's made by inmates. They don't scare me. After I got out of the military, I was a prison guard for a couple years. I worked at a prison called Riverbend Maximum Security Institution. It sucked. <laughs> That's why I'm not doing it anymore. Alright. So yeah, there it is. Nice little trip down memory lane. I think I can at least try to use these. Maybe I can use them as work clothes or something like that. I'll save the patches, definitely. But yeah. Try to work on these boots a little bit. Anyways, guys, that's all the time that I have for today. I hope it was at least kind of interesting for you. <laughs> Until next time, thumbs up. All right, guys, I'm trying on these pants here, and I've got these straps adjusted all the way out, and I still can't button up this top button. So, uh, apparently they shrunk. <laughs> No, for real, I guess I must have gained some weight since my deployment. But the shirts... Shirt still fits good. So that's something. So I can get some use out of these anyway. Like I said, I'll take the patches off. 
uh, use them for something. I don't know what yet, but like I said, if they stay in the box here, they're just going to dry right away, so might as well try to get some use out of them. I don't think I'm going to get any use out of these pants anymore, though. <laughs> Alright guys, till next time.